Hey, hello, how are you? It's me, Noor. Welcome back to my channel. It has been a minute. Um, things have been not so funky fresh. Uh, depression. Um, anyway, I wanted to do my June wrap up today. Yeah, June, right? June wrap up today and also do the mid year freak out tag as it is officially the middle of the year because the middle of the year is the beginning of July, not June. Um, anyway, so in June, I read three books, as I mentioned, not a great month, but the two, I was trying to read only nonfiction this month. So the first two books I read were um, In the Dream House by Carmen Maria Machado and Hidden Valley Road, which I read in a vlog that I will link somewhere. And I really enjoyed both of them. So In the Dream House, if you don't know, is a memoir by the author, Carmen Maria Machado, about her abusive relationship. And it basically conceptualizes or tells the story of this relationship through um, using the metaphor of a dream house and writing it in different forms. It's very um, sort of disjointed and yeah, it's really interesting, very dark, and I think that she captures sort of the horror that you feel when, you know, a space that's supposed to be safe for you becomes the space of violence. I think it's also really important that we hear these narratives of abuse within the context of queer relationships because I think like as she says in the book because, you know, queer people have been so marginalized for so many years, you almost don't want to say something that might give queer people a bad rep but in not telling these stories it's a like really isolating for the victims but also very dehumanizing because like queer people are assholes too queer people are people therefore they are equally as likely to be shitheads like abusive terrible people and then i read hidden valley road which is the account of a family and the family has 12 kids and half of them are diagnosed with schizophrenia and so this family it's like the mid-century they become a major case study in the development of schizophrenia research and i think this book does a really good job of basically talking about how this illness affects everyone in the family whether or not they are the person that is ill. It also uh, recounts the history of the research itself and how, you know, social um, factors or like social attitudes influence the waves of research and of course how like, you know, pharma politics, capitalist politics um, affected when and what drugs got rolled out for schizophrenia. Um, very interesting. And the final book I read in the month of June was They Were Her Property by Stephanie E. Jones Roger. And this book is basically about the institution of slavery and the role that white women played in maintaining this institution, particularly from an economic perspective. I think often when we, and historians even, uh, talk about slavery, think about slavery, it's seen as a male-driven economy and women are seen as, you know, bystanders, innocent, didn't really know what was going on, would have helped out if they could, as opposed to like active participants in the institution. Um, this book really does a good job of showing you like how much skin white women had in the game like of course they would want to maintain this institution and were active participants in it because slavery was often the way that they could amass you know wealth and financial independence um, i think this book also of course is very dark and disturbing i think particularly what i found to be the most like oh i need to take a break is the role that women played white women played in the control over black women's bodies and how much um, trauma they inflicted on black women um, particularly by forcing them to perform like maternal and reproductive labor it's just it also talks about how you know white women were really savvy when it came to the economics of the slave trade and there might be 
you know, inclinations to paint them as being kind or more forgiving, which definitely is not the case as you see from anecdotes in the book, but also a lot of times this is women protecting their property, so to speak, like not being like, oh, don't, you know, enact violence against this person because they're a person, but that's my property and you're devaluing it. Um, so it's very insidious. I think something else I found really interesting was towards the end of the book, the author talks about some of the data collected about the slave trade and about slavery in America. And of all the different variables that were accounted for, the majority of them had to do with enslaved people as opposed to the people doing the enslaving, right? So we didn't we didn't really know like how many of them were men or women, like those demographics were not clearly delineated. And I think it made me think a lot about how in history, like of course we want to understand and you know acknowledge the violence enacted against people and the oppression people face and still do face, but I also think that by only putting the violence and the people that face violence under the microscope, you are sort of viewing, you're viewing the effect, not the cause, right? You're not really looking at the factors that played into people wanting to maintain this institution. And I think that in framing your understanding in this way, oftentimes it puts sort of the focus and onus on people that are marginalized to be the ones to dismantle their systems of oppression as opposed to the people that actively created those systems. Is that making sense? I feel like thoughts rattling in the brain. I don't know if that comes together, but that's definitely one thing I was thinking about specifically when reading that. Those are all the books I read in June. Let me tell you how my year's been so far. Let's catch up. Let me do the tag. Um, so I've seen a couple of versions of this tag floating around. So these questions might be a little bit jumbled. I might miss one or two. Who knows? But let's chat. Um, okay, so it starts off with the best book you've read this year. And I think the best book I've read this year would have to be either um, on Earth We're Briefly Gorgeous by Ocean Vuong, which is a letter the author writes to his illiterate mother, sort of recounting his own coming of age and what it is like to be a queer child of immigrants in the East Coast? Suburbs? I don't know. But dealing with addiction, queerness, um, just really devastating, beautifully written, it's so clear that Ocean Vuong paid attention to every single word that is on that page and I love that. It is meticulous. And then I think maybe the second book that could go in this category would be Whereabouts by Jhumpa Lahiri. I feel like that book came to me when I needed it. It felt like it was written just for me. It was everything I needed. Um, this book is basically about the narrator and the different places she goes and how those different places play a role in her, you know, solitary life, the different people that inhabit those places, how they affect her life. And I think this book, even though it's very melancholic, is really like a celebration of a life lived alone and how rich that can be, even if it can be lonely. And for me as someone that loves to spend time alone, just like seeing her go to a cafe or sitting on her balcony writing, like that's, it's a self to my soul. Like that book is for me, I feel. I love it, I love it so much. Okay, um, the least favorite book of the year. I think this would probably have to be The Kiss Quotient by Helen Huang. Um, I've talked about this a little bit before. I love a romance, I love like, I just love a romance. I love the whimsy. I love a suspension of disbelief. Things don't have to be realistic. However, within the reality of your world, your character's motivations have to make sense. Like, if this character is struggling with physical touch and intimacy, how is she within like two chapters constantly like getting it on? Also, why do your characters have like no communication skills like why do they never talk about their problems also why is their entire attraction to each other just hinged upon the fact that like 
they fuck. Like, it's not good. It's not well written. It's bad. Um, sorry if you like this book, but I don't. I really don't like this book. I think it's lazy writing. Yeah, drinking that haterade for this. The most surprising book that you've read this year. Most surprising, I would have to say, um, Exhalation by Ted Chiang, just because I'm not like I do enjoy speculative fiction like the ones that I've read um I love Kurt Vonnegut not to be like a soft boy of tinder but I do love Kurt Vonnegut Cat's Cradle is probably one of my favorite books that I think about constantly but yeah I'm not really a speculative fiction reader regularly but I found this book to be so wonderful like this collection of short stories basically you know uh, takes place they're all sci-fi short stories right so can't really give you a synopsis but I think they're so fascinating because oftentimes I think sci-fi can be painted as being very dark but these books are deeply optimistic and yeah very surprising really enjoyed them definitely want to read more Ted Chiang most disappointing read most disappointing read, I guess I would say Topics of Conversation by Miranda Popke, just because it's sort of in that vein of books I like, where it's nothing really happens, the character's very depressed, and it's just ruminations on life, um, quite dark, but I don't know, I just felt like it was a little bit edgelordy. I also think another book that was very disappointing was Anxious People by Frederick Bachman. Uh, I never finished that book, so I guess that would probably be one of my least favorites, but um, it was a book club book for my company book club, and yeah, just very disappointing. Too much was going on. I thought it would be good, because I've heard I've heard good things about A Man Called Uva and Bear Town, so I figured Anxious People would be good, but not really my thing, I have to say. New favorite author? I don't know, I haven't read, like, multiple books by an author actually no that's a lie i did read a couple of joan didion's and i'm curious to read more i wouldn't go so far as saying she's a favorite author by any means but definitely an author that i am very interested in reading more from same with elena ferrante i know there's a question later on about like another sequel or the best sequel you've read i haven't read the second book in the neapolitan series but i definitely want to read that book um, so yeah I'm very curious to read more from Didion and Elena Ferrante a book that made you cry every book honestly I'm not a very weepy person like in my personal life but when it comes to books movies TV shows I will cry like watching anything I've cried watching Love Island not this current season because it's like been I cried because how bad it is no it's not true um, but yeah, I'll cry watching anything, reading anything, so that's not really saying much, but definitely cried reading Conversations with Friends by Sally Rooney. I think it was just very relevant when I read it, and yeah, it got me, it got me. Um, this book is basically about these two young girls that get involved with this older couple, and it questions the, um, modes of monogamy I guess and how viable monogamy is within our current world. I think it talks a lot about love and um, in the words of Mitski, a lonesome love. Yeah, very interesting. I also cried obviously, you know, The Year of Magical Thinking by Joan Didion. That definitely made me cry. Um, it's basically her memoir following the death of her husband and her daughter being sick cried reading um on earth we're briefly gorgeous oh my god bawling uh yeah cry a lot while reading a book that made you happy um i would have to say the house in the cerulean sea by tj clune that book is wholesome that book is wholesomeness exemplified um it's basically if Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends was a book. It follows this guy called Linus Baker, I believe, 
and he works for the government like some government agency where he has to go check up on this orphanage that houses magical children and when he goes there he finds a lot more than he signed up for like these kids are tough but he forms uh, an unlikely little family and it's just so sweet so sweet um, so yeah, that book definitely made me happy. Also, The Switch by Beth O'Leary, of course. Um, love old ladies, love old ladies living their life. Um, it basically follows our main character who switches apartments with her grandmother to get a new lease on life. And they both have their little romance. They both find their community. Um, they both do their thing and it's a good time most beautiful cover i would probably have to say fake accounts by lauren euler first of all you know just visually very striking and i love prints like i love the printing process i'm very interested in making my own prints so i just love the way it looks um from like a textural standpoint but then also i think it relates really well to what the book is talking about since the book is so much about perception and being online and the identities we create this sort of you know uh propaganda poster big brother is watching you vibe like really fits what the book is talking about um, also because of this like print quality to the cover it sort of gives you the sense of reproductibility like you know you can print something over and over um and i think that really ties in well to the idea of fake accounts and like the numerous identities you can create online and how no one really knows who you are so you can be everything at once um, which the main character does do so yeah i think that is definitely a cover new release that you haven't read yet so the road trip beth o'leary i have a hold on it at the library i'm waiting impatiently uh, it says about two weeks, so in two weeks you will see me frothing at the mouth, you will see me going off online. Um, I cannot wait. Come on. I've talked about this before, but I love Beth O'Leary. I really do. Most anticipated release? Um, I'm not really sure what's coming out. I don't really no, I feel like I'm doing a bad job. I know the new Sally Rooney is coming out and I would be interested to see what that's like. Um, I wasn't that big of a fan of Normal People, the book. Like, I really found it interesting, but, you know, it wasn't, I think it was a bit overhyped, but Conversations with Friends definitely was like, oh, nice through the heart. Uh, so I'd be interested to see what this new book is about. Yeah, I guess that's most anticipated because that's the only new release I really know about. Books you want to read by the end of the year. All of them. Every book I have. Um, no, I definitely want to read A Quick Mezzi, The Death of Vivek Oji. In fact, I think I'm going to read that this week. Um, I definitely want to read more nonfiction. I still have to read Orientalism by Edward Said. I have Arundhati Roy's collection of essays, My Seditious Heart, which is a huge chunker um, that I haven't read yet and definitely a goal to finish that by the end of the year. Um, I want to read The Annihilation of Caste by B.R. Ambedkar. Um, as far as fiction goes, I definitely want to dip my toes more into some speculative fiction as I was saying. I would love to le read Octavia Butler, um, Ursula Le Guin. I want to read more Kurt Vonnegut. Um, what else? I also really am curious to read Too Much and Not in the Mood by Durga E. Chu Bose. I believe that's her name. Yeah, a bunch of books. Listen, I'll read anything I can get my hands on. But yes, that is all. Those are the books I read in June, uh, the books I've read so far this year, and the books I hope to read and talk to you about in the future. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that there are books here that maybe you'll pick up. Um, I hope that there's books that you can recommend to me. I hope you had a good time. And thank you for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. And I'll see you soon. Very, very soon. I promise. And hold me to it. Okay. Bye.